Do you have some old decor around the house in need of a refresh? Well, in today's video, I'll be creating some unique cottage decor using 10 old thrift store finds from around my house. Thrift flipping is all about transforming old or thrifted items into something new and fresh. And with spring just around the corner, what better time to refresh our homes? So let's get started. For this first project, I grabbed two rusty fireplace shovels from my garage that I bought at a thrift store well over a year ago. After I gave them a good cleaning, I printed out two vintage images in sizes to fit the flat surface area of each shovel. After printing and cutting out the images on regular copy paper, I placed the paper in the shovel and pressed it along the edges to create crease lines that I could cut along to create a perfect fit. I applied a thin even coat of Mod Podge to the back of the image and also to the surface of the shovel. Then I pressed the image into the shovel, carefully smoothing out any wrinkles. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I roughed up the edges of the paper, first with some sandpaper and then with a utility knife, just to give it a more natural aged appearance. Next, I brushed on a little Mod Podge along the edge of the paper and then sprinkled on some cinnamon, shaking off the excess. This will help the paper to blend into the rust of the shovel. Once these edges were dry, I wiped off the excess cinnamon and applied a top coat of Mod Podge over the image. Then I printed out some coordinating images to attach to the handle of each shovel. Because I'm keeping the strawberry shovel, I just used glue stick to attach the little strawberry seed packet image to a piece of cardboard that I cut out and then hot glued to the handle. I think everything looks better with a bow. So I wrapped a little twine around the top of the shovel handle and tied it in a bow. And then I applied some Mod Podge as a top coat over the seed packet image. I repeated the process with the chickens for sale sign, only this time I Mod Podged it to a small piece of wood. And then I drilled a small hole in each top corner so that I could run a little twine through it. But I still just hot glued the sign to the shovel handle. Because the handle on this shovel was a little longer, I decided to dress it up with some faux flowers. I hot glued the base of the stem to the back of the sign and then used a little florist wire to hold it in place higher up on the handle. And I tied a bow over the florist wire. You might remember that I purchased a whole Ziploc bag full of doilies from Goodwill recently, and I wanted to see if I could turn one of them into a little Easter basket. First, I took a plastic pot and wrapped it in a sheet of aluminum foil. Then I made a 50-50 mixture of water and white glue in a small bowl. I mixed it up and soaked my doily in this glue mixture. Once it was completely saturated, I wrung out the excess water and glue. Then I shaped the doily over the bottom and sides of the plastic pot, and because the doily was a little longer than the pot, I sat the pot up on a jar of paint. I decided a little more glue couldn't hurt, so I went ahead and brushed on the rest of my water glue mixture. Then I let the doily dry overnight. The next morning, the doily popped right off the aluminum foil. I traced around the bottom of the plastic pot onto a cardboard cereal box and cut out two circles to help make this basket a little sturdier. 
I hot glued one of the circles to the bottom on the inside of the basket and the other circle to the bottom on the outside of the basket. I went around the edges of the two circles and added some additional hot glue to make sure that they stayed well stuck together. I wanted to add a handle to the basket, but I knew it would have to be something really lightweight, so I pulled a strip off of an old placemat and hot glued the two ends on the inside of the doily. Then I filled the basket with Excelsior, tied on a bow made from Dollar Tree burlap trim, and then hot glued on a broken piece of jewelry to the center of that bow. And finally, I filled the basket with some simple white and gold flecked plastic eggs. I don't normally talk about anything very personal because, well, after all, this is a DIY channel. But today I want to tell you about something that I really regret. When I was younger, I was a total sun worshiper. I laid out in the sun with no sunscreen all of the time. And I frequently went to tanning beds during the colder months. And so now I am really paying for it. My skin has aged so much in the last few years, and I feel like that I look much older than I actually am. So like a lot of women, I have tried all kinds of anti-aging creams and lotions, but recently I have started trying something completely different, and that is treating my skin from the inside out by drinking Peak Life teas. I like to have a warm cup of the matcha in the mornings in place of what used to be my second cup of coffee. The matcha has antioxidants and chlorophyll that help to firm, brighten, and clarify the skin. And I like to sip on a cold glass of the BT Fountain in the afternoons while I'm crafting in place of what used to be a Diet Coke. The BT Fountain has clinically proven ceramides and hyaluronic acid, which keeps the skin hydrated, improving skin elasticity and helping to reduce fine lines. If you think you would like to try Peak Life teas, head to peaklife.com slash 15 or just click on the link in the description box below to get 15% off your order, plus free shipping for life on Peaks Radiant Skin Duo. And for a limited time, my viewers will also get a complimentary starter kit. Some of you may remember that I recently purchased a bag of dollhouse furniture to use in an upcycled clock. Well, I still had some of that furniture left over. I cleaned it up, removed the little cushion from the chair seat, and gave it a couple coats of Zenser White Primer spray paint. I wanted to turn these into little faux planters. I started by gluing a small piece of styrofoam to the seat of the chair. Then I glued sheet moss over the piece of styrofoam, including a little bit on the sides. To create holes to hold the tiny flowers that I would need to use, I first punched a hole through the moss and into the styrofoam, added a drop of hot glue, and then inserted my tiny faux plants and flowers. The desk was missing most of its drawers, so I filled the openings with styrofoam and then added a few droopy, succulent stems. I also added styrofoam to the one remaining drawer and added a succulent in there too. Then I hot glued Spanish moss over any areas of visible styrofoam. I hot glued a small rabbit figurine from Dollar Tree to the desktop and then I hot glued a small flower into the bunny's hands. I 
I have had this thrift store candle plate for at least a couple years. To brighten up this rather dark bronzy color of this metal plate, I applied some gold rub and buff with my finger over the entire top surface. At this point, I thought that I would spend about five minutes applying these IOD fruit transfers to the center of each of the three candle openings. But that's not exactly how it turned out. These transfers did not, I repeat, not want to adhere to the waxy rub and buff surface. So I decided to paint each candle hole with some dark brown chalk paint, giving the transfer something better to hold on to. And it worked. This time, as I rubbed over the transfer, it stuck onto the newly painted surface. I actually liked the brown background behind the fruit, so I don't know why, but I decided to apply some of the rub and buff over the top of the images. I immediately regretted that decision and tried to wipe away as much of that gold wax as I possibly could. Do you think I ruined it? Should I paint over the transfers and start again? Let me know what you think. To make this piece look even more aged, I brush some Mod Podge around the edges on the inside of each of the circles and then sprinkled on some cinnamon, just like I had done on the shovels. To create a hanger for this piece, I use some Gorilla Glue to attach a small D-ring to the back side. This little metal tricycle is another thrift store find that has been in my stash for years. The little wicker basket on the back end makes it perfect for a spring planter. I hot glued a small piece of styrofoam inside the basket and then began cutting apart some faux greenery and flowers to add to the basket. I also stuck some small pieces of florist wire into styrofoam eggs so that I could add those to the basket too. I wanted to add a couple ceramic bunnies to the center of the basket, but you couldn't see them above the flowers, so I glued in another piece of small styrofoam so that they would sit up taller. I wasn't really loving my choice of yellow tulips with blue eggs, so I traded out the tulips for some small pink roses and I traded out the blue eggs just for some simple white ones. I liked this much better. I attached a couple coordinating bows to the basket using a long straight pin stuck into the styrofoam. To dress up the rest of the tricycle, I tied a rosebud to the handlebars with a piece of ribbon and a little hot glue. And then I cut out the transparent top portion of a Dollar Tree butterfly sticker and hot glued that to the seat. betting that I'm not the only one who has a couple old ratty grapevine wreaths lying around just collecting dust. I don't think I can top last year's butterfly wreath, but I thought I'd try my best and see what I could come up with this year. After I tucked in all the loose strands of grapevine, I began using some very sturdy florist wire to attach some styrofoam eggs to the grapevine wreath. I found a couple faux stems in my stash that were a green color that I thought coordinated well with the color of the Easter eggs. I cut it apart into small pieces and then added those pieces to the grapevine wreath. 
I had ordered a variety pack of feathers from Amazon very cheaply, and I decided that the black and white speckled ones coordinated the best with my wreath, and I began sticking those feathers into the grapevine, especially in the vicinity of the Easter eggs. Many of the feathers were quite small, so I added some additional greenery vines to help fill in empty areas. I was also able to wrap some of this around the loose pieces of grapevine and have a few pieces drooping off the bottom edge of the wreath. To create a simple hanger, I just ran a loop of twine through the grapevine on the back side of the wreath. I think this next project is my favorite one this week. I started with a thrift store wood candlestick, which I painted with a couple coats of light green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with some sandpaper and then applied a coat of clear wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. Next, I cut several small branches from a spirea bush in my front yard and formed them into circles of approximately the same size. To make your branches more bendable, you can soak them in warm water for 15 to 20 minutes. I used florist wire to secure each circle and to secure the three circles together at the top and at the bottom to create a sphere shape. I hot glued a small piece of sturdy styrofoam into the candle stand, and then I pressed the base of the stick orb into that piece of styrofoam and added hot glue over it to help hold it in place. I applied hot glue to the back of small pieces of sheet moss and applied those over the styrofoam and the base of the stick orb. This kind of acts like a mossy masking tape to help further hold the stick orb in place. First, I added some fern fronds to droop down over the sides, and then I added some pink roses in the center of the orb. And finally, I added just some additional greenery to fill in around the roses. I also added a few faux vines and leafy stems to wrap around the sticks. Although it seemed sturdy enough, I went ahead and used wood glue to attach a wood round to the base of the candlestick, just to make it less likely to tip over. For some reason, I am always attracted to metal toolboxes at the thrift store, so over the years I have accumulated several of them. Even though this one was already a pretty shade of blue, I decided to go ahead and paint over it with a couple coats of white chalk paint. I painted right over all of the hardware too. I had some floral transfers from Amazon left over from another project that I thought would look pretty on this toolbox. Once the chalk paint was dry, I applied the flowers using the transfer tool that comes in the package of transfers. I used a little sandpaper to lightly distress the toolbox, mostly on the edges and over the pieces of hardware. Then to seal the paint and the transfers, I applied a good coat of clear wax using a wax brush on the exterior of the toolbox. And then I followed it up with a soft cloth to wipe off any extra wax. I 
have had this metal ring in my stash for a long time. And if you know what it is, please let me know in the comments because I have absolutely no idea. Although I like tarnished metals, I wanted to freshen up the brass ring a bit by cleaning it with a dab of Brasso and a soft cloth. I decided I wanted to use this as a frame, so I printed out a pretty vintage farm image onto a piece of cardstock large enough to cover the opening. I traced around the inner circle of the metal ring and cut out a slightly larger circle from a piece of cereal box. Then I just used a good quality glue stick to adhere the farm image to the cardboard circle, cutting off the extra paper. Then I just used hot glue to adhere the round image to the back of the metal ring. Then I applied a light even coat of Mod Podge over the image to give it a protective coat. I used a little bit of Gorilla Glue to attach a D-ring to the cardboard for hanging. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you to all of my viewers who took the time to check out my new online store last week. It was quite an adventure for my son and I, and I have read all of the comments. I really appreciate the feedback. I also wanted to let you know that today's DIYs are now for sale on the store, along with some other new vintage items from my stash. Thank you so very much for watching today, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now.